Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I welcome everyone for joining God's Remnant at God's Church of Love online. Now we're going to read from Psalms 462. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against the man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, and he is my defense. I shall not be moved. Mm. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Now, that I stopped at. I can't even see it. That's all right. You'll see where I stopped. But anyway, so what I want to share with you is bring that idea back to my mind, Lord, because that was a good example. The Lord gives me examples to make the point. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now, when you see that scripture that says, I shall not be greatly moved, you won't be shaken off your foundation. Now, let me ask you this. We're playing out in the streets, all of us are kids, and I'm the bully, and I push you around, and I beat you up, and I take your candy, and I take your money, right? And I threaten you, I'll beat you up if you tell on me. All of that, I just give you a run for your money. Boy, you just hate to see me coming, because you know here comes trouble. But guess what? You live on that street, don't you? You live on that block. You know your address. You know where your house or where your apartment is, right? Well, I can push you around, talk about you, call you all out your name, make fun of you, laugh at you, push you, take from you, steal from you, beat you up. I can do whatever I want. And you can go home with a black eye and with empty pockets and tears running down your face. But guess what? Your address remains the same. No matter how much I try to overpower you, I cannot take your home from you. Am I right? All right. Don't everybody speak at once. So, check this out. Satan can mess with you. Satan can bully you. Satan can tear you down and rip you to shreds and make you feel like a nobody and make you feel worthless and make, give you feelings of depression and uh, haunt you at night and harass you with his demonic spirits. But guess what? He can't take your address from you, baby cakes. And what is your address? Jesus Christ. He can't take that from you. Jesus said himself, no man can snatch you out of my hand. No one can take you out of my grip. No one. So no matter what life brings, no matter how much shaking going on, no matter how much shaking is going on, you can never be shaken off your foundation. You can move if you choose to. But can't nobody move you. You have to think about it that way. When you see that scripture, I shall not be moved. There's another scripture that says, 
I will turn my face as a flint. Like, no, I shall not be moved. And no matter what, you have to pour your heart out to God. When life hits you on the blind side, when life kicks you in your rump, when life sticks its foot out to trip you up, and the demons gang up on you. You not only have to remember who you are, but you have to remember whose you are. To whom you belong. Don't ever be intimidated by a human or a spirit. Don't ever be intimidated by that. Because if all authority is given to Jesus Christ, which it is, and you have Christ in you, and the Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, then you have all authority over people, animals, creatures, and spirits. You have all authority, baby. God can make you disappear in the middle of a lynch mob. You can walk right through them just like Jesus did. God is a God of the supernatural. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You are safe, baby. God is your refuge and a very present help. You have no need to fear. No matter how bad the earth is shaken and the mountains are moved to the midst of the sea. Psalms 46. I'm loose paraphrasing on that one. Don't even trip any of that. No matter what is going on, whether you need this word now or you need it a year from now, remember, nobody can change your address. You're safe in the hands of God. It's like, here you are, sitting right in God's hand. And God is looking at your enemy over his glasses. I'm being, I'm being facetious. Over his glasses with that glaring eye. I dare you to try to touch him. It's going to be your behind if you try. You try it here. This is mine. And I'm telling you, Satan knows what he can't do. He knows what he cannot do. He knows his limits. He knows his place. But he tries to make you think he is all of that and a bag of chips. He tries to make you think he is all powerful, all knowing, ever present. Oh, please. He's a trained puppy that God orders around and gives permission to do certain things. But no matter what Satan proposes, God puts down the limits and the law. And Satan cannot move beyond that. So God knows all that you can handle. God knows what it takes to get you from point A to point B. God will use Satan as a tool. And while Satan thinks he's outsmarting God, and I really believe God put a little seed of retardation in Satan's mind because it's right there in the scriptures. Everybody knows it. And it looks like Satan is the last one to really get it because he still keeps pulling out the same old trick bags all the time. Knowing the end of the story, knowing what the end holds, he really thinks he can outsmart God. So God must have short-circuited one of those marbles up there in his mind and clouded it with his own pride, with his arrogance, so that he can't see the truth for falling for his own lies. There, you have to remember, the same authority that God gave, that God has, he gave to his son. We have his son. We have the spirit of the living God inside of us. 
You know how Lynn was praying for different people and they got saved? You saw that video? Well, listen to this. There are times, many of you, who Satan tries to give a stroke to. Satan tries to make have a heart attack. He'll try to make things fall, fail in your body. And all you have to do is tell your body what it will and will not do. Why? Because you have the authority of God. You have the, the authority in the name of Jesus. If Jesus says you can tell the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the midst of the sea, why can't you tell your heart to act right? I can't count the times that I had pain in my left arm. And all I do is I rebuke heart attack in the name of Jesus. I mean, it's old, it's redundant, nothing creative about it, nothing astounding, but it works. I almost had a stroke in the choir stand. I told you guys that story. And I broke out in a profuse sweat. Left side of my face went numb. My ear went deaf, all on the left, which means I would have had problems on the right. And guess what? I didn't have time to explain to people that I was in a crisis. I had to handle that right away with what God had already given me. Time was of the essence. Five more seconds and I could have been in a full-blown stroke. So I had to immediately command my blood pressure to go down in the name of Jesus. And I rebuked stroke from taking place in my body in the name of Jesus. And I went back and forth between those two like a tennis match in warp speed because I was dripping sweat and I was almost about to faint. And what did God do? Hey, I haven't had a stroke now, have I? You can take authority. You see somebody in your family fall on the floor. This may be for future reference for some of you. Right before you pick up that phone and call 911 while you're grabbing it with your hand, you tell that person's body, I forbid you to stroke in the name of Jesus. I rebuke stroke in Jesus' name. I rebuke heart attack. In the name of Jesus, I bind that. I command that heart to beat regularly. 911, yes, this is the address. This is the situation. You cover both ends, but you handle it in the spirit. Because it's going to take them time to get there. But see, God can act immediately. That's the authority you have. There's no devil in hell and no poop butt on earth that can take your address. Nobody can take your power from you. Nobody can dismiss your authority. If God gave it to you, baby, it's yours.